Hello, everyone, and welcome to NGLCC Webinar Wednesdays. Uh, for those of you I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, my name is Lauren Schweppe. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm our Director of Programs and Stakeholder Advocacy here at NGLCC. And thank you all so much for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, talking about doing business with Delta. So before I turn it over to our awesome speakers for today, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, the Q&A feature is enabled here on Zoom, so please use that to submit your questions questions, and then we'll have a Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. We'll answer all, answer all of your questions at that point. Uh, the webinar today is also being recorded and will be posted to the NGLCC YouTube page uh, tomorrow for viewing as well. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm very excited to introduce our two speakers today. Uh, Makita Matthews is the Senior Manager of Supplier Diversity at Delta Airlines. On the surface, Makita focuses on supporting the enterprise in finding, qualifying, and integrating diverse suppliers within the supply chain. However, Makita is working on changing the narrative of supplier diversity from a good thing to do to a crucial business strategy to sustain the enterprise. Prior to joining the team at Delta 10 months ago, Makita split her time between a sourcing and procurement leader and supplier diversity leader with two companies over six years. She's assisted with the implementation of a supplier diversity program, ran a supplier diversity program, and led the refreshing of a supplier diversity program. She's been able to experience best practices and uh, not so best practices for, for a supplier diversity program. Makita proudly holds a Lean Six Sigma Green Belt certification and strives to bring efficiencies to everything she's involved in. In Makita's spare time, she enjoys exploring Atlanta as she's new to town, traveling to Central and South America, reading, writing, and spending time with family. She considers herself a bootleg botanist, at this phase in her life, but has dreams of having a real garden in a real greenhouse one day. Andrea Thomas is a supplier diversity manager focusing on providing access and opportunities to diverse businesses within Delta Airlines global operations. She creates inclusive programs and awareness campaigns for small diverse owned businesses to ensure Delta's supply chain is reflective of the communities we serve. Prior to joining Supplier Diversity, Andrea worked in global sales, where she was responsible for developing strategic and tactical plans to support the internal training and enablement needs of global sales. She began her career at Delta in talent acquisition, where she led the university relations team focused on recruiting and engaging early in career talent across the enterprise. She also serves as the vice president of BOLD, Delta's Black Employment Resource Group, where she seeks to elevate the voices of the Black employees while creating a sense of employment to foster, or pardon me, creating a sense of community to foster support and growth. Prior to Delta, Andrea held HR sales and DEI roles at IBM, Accenture, and Ford Motor Company. She's an active member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Inc., the Atlanta Women's Foundation, and the Management Leadership for Tomorrow, or MLT, Atlanta Chamber. She is a proud HBCU graduate, earning her Bachelor's in Business Administration and MBA from Florida A&M University's School of Business and Industry. So needless to say, you all are in great hands for today's presentation. So without further ado, Makita and Andrea, I will turn it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lauren. We appreciate the, the warm welcome and I'm um, excited to um, present with you all today and share more about Delta and um, hopefully you learn a little bit more about it. Um, one second as I share my screen. And like Lauren said, feel free to utilize the Q&A and the chat as we go, and we will uh, take note of your questions and try to answer them uh, as soon as we can. Awesome. So let's just kind of get down to business. Um, Lauren did a great job of um, introducing ourselves. So um, Nikita and I are excited to be a part of the supplier diversity team at Delta and um, figure out more ways to engage with you all and, and help support you as you continue to grow and hopefully within Delta's ecosystem. For um, today's agenda, I um, wanted to do just a quick overview of Delta, just to remind you, hopefully you're all Delta loyalists, but if not, just give you a little overview of Delta, um, some of the commodities that we have at Delta and how we source, um, a little bit of conference and meeting prep. So whether you're going to um, NGOCC's um, an annual conference or you're uh, heading to that meeting um, or pitch meeting with the uh, a corporate or just kind of a, a partner that you want to continue to do business with, um, helpful ways on how to prepare, how to elevate your, your presence and your pitch at a booth um, or matchmakers, but also some um, post-conference follow-up that could be used in a follow-up for a meeting as well. 
And then we would love to open the floor for questions um, to answer anything that you all may have. So with that, um, just a, a little overview of, of Delta and who we are. Um, so Delta as um, a global airline, we are 90,000 employees strong, um, serving over 200 million customers annually with 15,000 daily flights. And so the way Delta is able to have that global reach in terms of 300, country, uh, 300 destinations, 50 countries, is through our joint venture partners. And so when you think about Korean Air, Air Mexico, Virgin, KLM, um, newly Latam Air France, that's how we're really able to um, connect the world and um, to be able to kind of expand um, our operations. And so part of that with our joint ventures, when we, partnership is so important, is how we look at our vendors as well. And so in our major key hubs, so Atlanta, is, of course, is where our general offices is, but you kind of see our key, our hubs and key markets is um, our areas of operations. And so there's also opportunities for um, our supply chain to be more diverse in those areas as well. So as we continue to grow, um, we want to make sure that our supply chain is reflective of the um, 200 million annual customers that we have, as well as the 90,000 employees. But when we talk about the 90,000 employees and um, the 200 million customers we have annually, we really um, lean into our DEI, our diversity, equity, and inclusion um, strategy. And at Delta, um, it's embedded throughout our organization. When we talk about DEI, we're really talking about actively seeking diversity, pursuing equity, and then promoting inclusion. When seeking um, diversity, that's really from a talent perspective when you say internally and externally, but also within our operations from our supply chain. When you think about how can we be seek diverse suppliers that um, would be representative of the uh, categories and the commodities that we, that we have here at Delta. When we talk about equity, um, pursuing it, being intentional about um, creating equitable access and opportunities, whether that be for talent, for suppliers, um, but also just within our um, operations and then promoting inclusion. It's really focusing on how can we create that sense of belonging so you can show up as you are, not what you think you have to be. And so our DEI message is interweaved through, um, interwoven through our business resource groups where our employees can find um, uh, like-minded individuals and that affinity, um, but you don't necessarily have to be a part of that affinity to be a, um, a part of the um, business resource groups, but also through our talent strategies, through our sourcing process, um, but also just within when you see a, a gate agent or a flight attendant or pilot on board, um, how can we make your experience overall when you're traveling Delta um, welcoming and inclusive? And so within that, um, kind of want to talk about a little bit how um, supplier diversity fits within our global DEI strategy. Right. So thank you, Andrea. So the whole mission and goal of supplier diversity is to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion throughout our supply chain. And we want to make sure we increase our spend with small, diverse women, LGBT, vet, everybody that we uh, have underneath this diversity umbrella and promote DEI best practices through our supplier partners. Um, so we wanted to share what we buy because um, we are in a lot of different uh, areas. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on this page right here. So first, airport customer service. So that is all of our, you know, customer service, sort of our ticketing agents, our uh, janitorial services, our cabin cleaning, cargo handling, baggage handling, uh, you know, sky clubs, all of that is kind of within our uh, airport customer service cargo logistics space. Um, and it's it's important to know, and I know Andre, she's going to talk about uh, onboard services in a second, but um, it, it's good for example, to note that food can be a couple of different places. Yes, it's in our Sky Clubs, it's on board, but it's also associate events. So uh, just to keep that in mind, because there's different, you know, areas. And so um, corporate travel. So we're talking about um, distressed passengers. So maybe we mishandled you, unfortunately, and we have to get you to a hotel to spend the night. And so we have to buy the transportation for you to get to the hotel, as well as make sure that we have a hotel room for you. So that's kind of what's underneath that area. Uh, corporate real estate. So
So not only are we talking about our home offices and landscaping and, you know, the kind of demolitioning and repair of our home offices, but we're also talking about the spaces in the airport. So how we look at and configure our sky clubs as well as our terminals that includes construction that includes the signage that you see that includes kind of how we are laying out the chairs so there's a lot underneath that corporate real estate area um global cleanly cleanliness so this is a huge one especially after um, the COVID-19 pandemic. So the way that we think about making sure our planes are safe and uh, sanitary. So we're buying lots of products and um, uh, cleaning products to make sure everything is sanitary on the plane, in the terminals, in the sky clubs, as well as home office. And all of those products, uh, janitorial uh, sort of services kind of falls into that. Now our tech operations, that's a large, large um, area of spend as well. So we're talking about the maintenance for our airplanes. That includes the services as well as the different parts. We have um, uh, some suppliers who actually buy planes, tear them up, and they buy the parts that we can actually utilize for repairing. So there's a lot that goes underneath our technical operations. Um, we also, you know, have to buy the services for, this goes a little bit into the logistics part, but making sure that those engines or those large parts, maybe it's the tail or the wing of the plane, it gets to us. So that kind of falls underneath tech ops uh, as well. And lastly, the last one I want to talk about is IT and telecom. So IT, we're talking about uh, applications for our app, but also our computers um, that um, associates utilize. So we're also talking about AI and bots and all of these different things that can really help us um, uh, build, get a competitive advantage. Um, yes, we're talking, uh, staffing goes into IT as well, but as we think about what the future holds for us, how do we create a more seamless and uh, customer-centric uh, uh, sort of experience? Technology is is a huge, huge, huge area of focus and spend and telecom. We all have to have phones and uh, make sure we're able to communicate with each other. So uh, hardware, software, uh, stuff like that. And uh, Andrea will talk about the last couple. Awesome. Thanks, Makita. And so um, we talk about marketing communications. I'm pretty sure most are familiar with that. But we think from a Delta perspective, that can be um, anything from graphic designers to um, PR, um, full um, service marketing strategy agencies from um, ideation to strategy to execution. Um, and that can be across the board. So when you think about Delta's marketing organization, which is a little bit different than um, a traditional um, consumer packaged good, we have a, a variety of um, departments within marketing, whether that be lifestyle, um, cycle marketing, um, destination, um, social media, brand, and kind of um, branding and kind of purposeful marketing. Um, so we have a variety of areas when we talk about marketing and we look at kind of the full gambit of what um, the scope of work for our marketing communications. And that could be for internal use for um, our employees, for our um, internal uh, communication channels, as well as for our large scale marketing um, opportunities um, at Delta. For fuel, um, of course, we're an airline, so we're really looking at uh, various different areas, but when um, high level, if you're thinking about jet fuel and how we are able to um, have our aircraft, uh, aircraft fly um, globally, um, that's a huge spend opportunity um, for Delta. And we also have our own refinery, so fuel is a very important area here at Delta. Um, events and sponsorships. So when you think about the 200 million annual um, customers that we have and the 90,000 employees, we do quite a bit of events and, um, and sponsorships. So when we say events, that is everything from um, internal employee events to customer events. And so the full suite, whether that is um, furniture rental, um, transportation, um, full production, how, uh, full production, um, full event production, um, AV production as well, um, staffing, printing, um, anything that you would need for an event, we need the full gambit because um, we do quite a bit. The volume is there for the events that we have um, annually. 
um, funny enough, we actually have our largest employee event called Boulevard Bash, where in essence, we're talking about 50, 60,000 employees of that 90 on average will attend. And it's a huge production at our campuses here um, in Atlanta, at the general offices. So um, that is uh, an example of the, the scale that we're looking at for events. Um, sponsorships, that also means we have partnerships with all of the major, a lot of major um, sports teams, um, entertainment companies, but also um, university um, uh, sports teams. So when we talk about sponsorships, where's that opportunity to engage to uh, where there is alignment in values to um, spread our advocate and spread our message. Um, human resources. So that's more about our people function. So when you think about how we can support from a um, staffing perspective, a um, people development, so anything around um, skills related um, training, um, that would fall within our, our, our HR um, function. Onboard services. So similar to what Makita was saying, airport customer service is when you're at the airport um, versus onboard services is everything, um, the experience on board. So there are three main areas when we talk about onboard services. Um, we have passenger supplies. So in essence, if you cut the plane in half and turn it over and shake it, any and everything on the board, because we buy everything but the plane. Um, so that would be passenger from the napkins to the, the service wear um, to the trash bags. Um, that would be passenger supplies. Um, food and beverage. So all of the snacks you get in main cabin, hopefully you're in Delta One. So the meals in Delta One. Um, as well as our alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. Um, when we talk about catering, so um, all of the um, wonderful meals that are served um, across an, the, our long haul flights, um, that is through our, our catering operations, which is a huge spin that we have. And one thing to kind of call out when we think about onboard services for those who are kind of in the food and beverage industry, um, to know a little bit of the difference when we talk about food and bev on board versus um, food within kind of the... Um, the, the retail space. So when we talk about food and beverage or passenger supplies on board, we're talking about um, the volume. So in essence, whatever is on one plane has to be on every plane. And so when we the, the volume and the capacity needed to be able to provide an elevated customer experience um, that Delta is known for, um, that is kind of a little bit of a, of a difference when we talk about if you're in a Target or a Publix um, and just being thoughtful about what that um, operation looks like when you're, um, if you're a food and bev um, supplier thinking about Delta or just any airline in general. And then health and wellness. So um, of course we have a, a chief um, health officer here at Delta and really focus on the overall well-being of the person. And so when we say um, wellness, that is financial, physical, mental, and emotional. And so when we talk about not only our benefits, but other resources that align to one of those four pillars around wellness. There's also a technology component because we do have 90,000 employees and we wanna make sure um, that they have access to the resources that we're looking to provide from a health and wellness standpoint. So hopefully that provides a little bit of an overview on some of the commodities that we look for and a little bit of insight in, in terms of um, types of suppliers we look for in each of those areas. All right, so there are some general qualifications that we typically look for as it relates to when we are vetting and when we're qualifying suppliers. These are kind of the, the bare minimum. There's of course differences as it relates to categories. Again, going back to the example of food, what is required in the Sky Clubs is very different than what is required for food on board. Um, and so some of those general um, requirements include knowing our mission and our core values and your mission and your core values um, uh, being aligned. So we often um, look into those sort of things when we're going through RFPs um, because we found that it's a much smoother ride when, we, when our mission and our core values are aligned. Um, up-to-date and valid business certification. So not only are we talking about um, supplier diversity certifications, we're talking about certifications with the state. Our MRO shops have to have certifications through the Department of Transportation and the FAA. So we're looking to see if those um, certifications are up-to-date because we can't, um, we, we can't um, be we can't have liabilities within our supply chain and, and not uh, having those sort of certifications would make sure would um, uh, pose a, a huge risk for us that we can't take. 
um, sustainable business operations, as you all know, uh, sustainability is becoming a huge thing. And especially with us as an airline, trying to think through how do we reduce our carbon footprint? How do we make sure we are a good corporate um, uh, uh, and corporate responsible? Um, what's the what's the term? Corporate responsible you know, corporate, I'll say that. Um, so excuse me, guys. But um, so we're trying to make sure how are we sustainable? Um, diversified revenue. This is huge because, again, we do look through this sort of stuff through the sourcing process because we know that if we are, t if we are, um, if we would make up X percent of your revenue, it could pose a risk to your business if we pulled out um, so we do look at, at that sort of thing and line of business and core competencies. Now, it's important to also have airline industry knowledge, understand what's going on in the legislative um, uh, area, the compliance, the FAA, the DOT, um, and making sure that um, your business practices are secure and safe because all of that is, is passed on to us. Um, and lastly, no Delta. Um, it is very hard to get in the door if you are completely unaware of our operations, our mission, um, and where we want to go. And we'll talk about how you can find some of those things a little bit later. But total cost of ownership. Um, so what that really means is, is are you able to share financial responsibility for things that we may want to develop or that are innovative. So we're going to be looking at some of those things as well. We look at references, the track record, innovation, uh, and uh, what in your business can help us provide a competitive advantage and growth. All right, so the sourcing process. This is at a very, very, very high level. Um, but once you have kind of talked to us and you've talked to our sourcing managers and you've one, identified the value added um, uh, aspect of your product or your service or solution, we understand where you kind of fit in within that supply chain. Um, that's where we have to really connect and that's where we'll convey the value to our um, to our uh, to our business partners and the actual people that have the checkbook. Because very often, I think there might be a little misnomer that supplier diversity has the checkbook. We do not. We don't have the checkbook. I wish we did. Um, but uh, with that being said, you, suppliers have has to um, they have to help us help them in really getting a clear understanding of the product, the service. So the solution and the value is really key and really helpful. Um, after that, um, generally, we go through this phase of pitching, right? So that could be a couple of different uh, sessions with us, the buyer, the VP of that business unit, et cetera. So um, be, be uh, cognizant of that and bear with us, but just know that, you know, the pitching phase that could take a, a little long. And then lastly, um, before we actually get into an RFP, there's the whole NDA process um, that we have to make sure we go through and agree to. Once the RFP comes out, um, it's really, uh, it's kind of a cardinal rule that once an RFP comes out, the sourcing manager that um, is running the RFP should be the only person you're talking to. Because if you're trying to ask us questions or you're trying to ask somebody else at Delta questions, that could look really bad um, as it may look like you're trying to get some out, you know, some insider information and, and we can't uh, take that risk. Uh, especially with our diverse suppliers who we've advocated so hard uh, to get in the, the, the RFP and in the process. So once we get into the RFP process, um, you know, ask all the questions you need, but direct them to the sourcing manager. And then typically after the RFP process, there's a down select. And that just goes, um, that's just evaluated by the, um, the, uh, the criteria in the RFP. Um, so a couple of things to note. When communicating added value, don't only talk about costs like, oh, we can save Delta, 
you know, millions of dollars a year, but talk about the totality of the value, right? So are there efficiencies that we will find utilizing your services or your product? Um, will your service or product help us increase market share? Because we'd love to get, um, you know, 100% of the, the customers on Delta flights, right? So help us understand how you'll help us gain market share. Is it innovative? Is it something that the other airlines, you know, uh, uh, don't have? Uh, exclusivity, if that's something that you're willing to, to give us, uh, because we do value stuff like that. Uh, increased customer employee experience and compliance is a huge one, um, but I'll go into those things a little bit later. Um, like I said, multiple pitches may be necessary. That may be due to many things, timing, um, so in the summertime, people have PTO, et cetera, different parties need, needing to be involved. So just know that that may be needed. And uh, lastly, getting to sourcing events take time. So for example, we may meet you at um, the NGLCC, we may have met you at the NGLCC conference in Denver this year, right? Um, but we know that the service you provide isn't RFPing until 2024. So, um, you know, just understanding that things take time. There's, you know, cycles of things um, and, you know, uh, keeping the relationship during that time is big and that's huge. And that's, um, that's a value add in and of itself. Anything else I missed on the sourcing process, Andrea? No, nope, I don't think so. All right, so Andrea is gonna go through how to prep for a conference or a meeting. Awesome. So when we're talking about um, whether it's NGLCC or a meeting with uh, maybe Delta or just a corporate partner um, in general, um, wanted to outline a couple of things that we we um, thought might be helpful. And as you're creating um, that pitch and that story in preparation. So um, I think the, the one of the biggest things is kind of outlining your objectives. So when you're identifying um, which corporation or um, who you want to meet with, um, Identify who can use your products or service or your solution. I think that's a big piece. I think we all have a hit list of, place, of um, companies or organizations that we think would be um, in alignment. So really, under, um, I, but also doing your um, identifying which of those corporations can actually utilize, um, there's uh, some synergy there. And then it's really kind of outlining what that plan looks like. So if you are going to a conference, as an example, to NGLCC, um, there's a lot that can be happening. Um, there are matchmakers, there are luncheons, there are um, there's the expo, there's kind of like some downtime in between sessions. So really craft your plan um, to say, here are um, the companies that I would like to spend time with on the matchmakers, because um, you know you have a little bit, um, kind of like 10 to 15 minutes to be able to have a more one-on-one -on -one conversation, because you know that there is um, a lot of alignment there. Also knowing that the expo, um, depending on traffic, we know which can be a, a quite busy, um, you're, you're thinking about a couple minutes to really just kind of introduce yourself versus having um, an opportunity to do a coffee chat or sit at during um, one of the luncheons and have an opportunity to, to interact. So building out that plan of, of how and where you want to meet the companies that you know will be there and how much time you'll actually need. So therefore you can kind of um, really be thoughtful and strategic about how you're spending your time to maximize that engagement with um, the corporation or company that you're you're um, you wanting to engage, and then really identifying um, what you want to get out of the conference or that meeting. I think that's really um, where you kind of almost work backwards. So if the goal of the conversation at the uh, the conference or the meeting is to um, one, I'd want to learn about um, just more about the the commodities or the operation. Um, I'd love to um, set up a follow-up in terms of a business meeting. Um, I'd love to be able to do business right away if, if that's a possibility, or I'd love to kind of create a partnership. And that, that kind of helps to identify um, how and where you want to meet them at the conference to, to engage. Um, but then you kind of work a little bit backwards if you start with what's your outcome or what you're looking for that outcome to be. And then really how you want to measure um, your ROI there. So if the goal was for you to meet, um, here are the top five companies that you wanted to, to chat with, um, how did you want to meet them? And what does that, um, how do you measure success from that? 
And that'll kind of also help you to build out what your plan of attack will be um, for that conference. Or if it's a, um, a matchmaker's um, external event from NGLCC, or if you're having a conversation with multiple um, introductory conversations with supplier diversity teams, um, what's, what does that outcome look like and how do you can best prepare? I think a big piece of it is it, it really is bringing the right team. So when you're at a conference or you're at, at um, having a meeting, um, I always love to say when you're, um, if you are a, um, a venture capitalist and you're listening to pitches all day, um, you might be the CEO of the startup who's looking for seed money, but maybe you're not the best at presenting. You're the idea person. And, but you do have someone on your team who's really great at pitching um, and telling the story. That doesn't mean that because if you're not as great of a storyteller, that doesn't mean that just because that's not your strength um, as some, in comparison to someone else, that doesn't mean that you don't bring value. So it's really thinking about how you can harness the power of your collective team to get your message and your story across to get the outcome that you want. So make sure you can bring the right person who can speak to the product, the service at a high level, then also break it down of your, um, of the uh, the scope of work that you have. And really, I think a big piece also is making sure that all of your, your website, your LinkedIn, everything is up to date to be able to connect. A lot of times we're doing digital cards or we're doing follow-ups via LinkedIn um, that move that accepts to um, an email. Make sure that all of your, your information is up to date. There have been a couple of times where we've had conversations with suppliers where a website, there's no um, LinkedIn to follow up. Um, they, all of the um, information about you is not necessarily um, intact. So I'm um, wanting to make sure you have that um, ready. And then also make sure that you have, um, your team has practiced kind of what you're all in alignment of the messaging that you want to share. So you want to make sure that if you're, you want to get out who you are, the work that you do, um, the industries that you serve, your competitors, um, some of your top projects, and what's your sweet spot. And make sure that everyone on the team is in alignment. So anyone who talks to anyone on the team um, has that same level of energy and understanding of what is the work that you do. So bringing the right team is important because you want to make sure that your message is heard and you want to make sure it resonates with those that um, who, who can really make an impact um, on your, your operation. I don't think we can stress enough the importance of doing your homework. Um, when you're having a conversation or doing your pitch, um, yes, we wanna see kind of top line, um, top um, 30,000 foot view of what is it that you do. But when you're having in your, your pitch or you have that um, that 15 minutes in a matchmakers, you have that, that um, three minutes at um, the expo or you have um, a 30 minute meeting and that you're trying to condense everything in, you really wanna make sure that you've done your homework on the, organization or the company that you're talking to. Um, so that one that shows that you have done, you understand their operation and where you would fit in. Um, even if whatever you're pitching, maybe not aligns at the moment. So as Makita mentioned, maybe there's not an open RFP, but we under you we have that basic understanding that you know how our operation works and where you fit in. And that could kind of get the wheel spinning of maybe they couldn't fit here, but maybe this would be an opportunity because we know a little bit of their sweet spot uh, we know at a high level what they do, but at a sweet spot. And so doing your, your, your research actually um, is, is, is quite easy. When you look at um, a going to Delta News, you can see all of um, different news stories within our operation um, to learn more about what, what's happening in the organization. Um, going on the company's 10Ks, 10Qs, um, if it's public and then private looking at Bloomberg, um, those are really great ways um, to be able to get the, the nitty gritty of the company. Um, if you think about some of Delta's um, recent um, news stories, when we're talking about Delta Sync, um, the launch of the partnership with Latam, um, when we're talking about where we are from a DNI or hiring, all of that is actually in the 10 Qs and the 10 Ks. So you can see if you are a um, an organization that does HR training, you can actually go into a 10 K, see our um, how our diversity breakdown. Look at how we're um, looking at our employees and what operations, how we've increased and decreased. Um, you can be able to see a lot of the work we do, especially if you're in, say you're in marketing and you are interested in destination marketing. You can look at our newest routes. Um, you can look at our operations through our, our 10Ks and 10Qs to understand how we work. And so that will allow you to craft your story um, based off um, our or the company's operations. 
One of my favorites, actually, we do it um, every quarter, is listening to um, the earnings call from our CFO. Um, it's a really great way to see how the business is operating. So when you're thinking about partnership, what does um, financially that looks like um, on both sides? So you can kind of get more insight in our total operations and how are we performing on a um, quarterly basis and then holistically as each quarter goes. And as Makita mentioned, really looking at um, certifications, but really following the FAA, um, uh, DOT, understanding what's happening in legislation um, with the airline industry, as an example, is, is something to really notice because that could have an impact on your industry or your business. And you want to be knowledgeable about how um, you could integrate or um, if would there be any um, kind of issues um, or uh, that could happen just because based on certain le legislation. And then I think the big piece is, is being a customer. If you're, um, not to plug again, be a Delta loyalist. Um, but if you're a customer, then you kind of understand um, our operations. You understand um, when we say customer experience, what that means from um, checking it, from purchasing a flight, from checking in, um, the experience on board, um, de-planning, your experience overall in the airport. Um, all of that matters when you think about how you could fit into the organization because you not only know, um, I think internally how, the company works, but also as an example for Delta, you understand as a customer. So you have both of those perspectives to be able to say how you could, what value you could bring um, with your potential partnership. Nikita, any um, additional thoughts there? Uh, nope, I think you had it. Knowing your, I, we could tell you plenty of um, <laughs> times where we've been pitched to and, um, you know, just information uh, a supplier could have used is is public knowledge, and we've had to spend a lot of a lot of time, uh, you know, kind of getting to the the nuts and the bolts of what it is. And hey, did you know that this was on our website? This is here. This is there. And uh, to be honest, if we're if we're asking too many questions and your initial pitch, it's something's uh, something's a little off, and we need to figure out what it is, and that's going to take a lot more time getting you into um, a, a pitch or a conversation with a buyer, and so that's you know one of the real crucial things that you must 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 do is know our business, do your research. And then lastly, when we talk about um, preparing, um, we'll go through a kind of a, some really key points and then kind of an, a really good example um, of a uh, pitch. But in essence, um, depending on where you are, whether it's a um, at the expo, at a matchmakers or in a meeting, um, your overall pitch, you, you want to keep it short and sweet and concise. Um, so clearly stating kind of your product, your servers, your solution that solves a problem that we're having. Um, I think sometimes where people get bogged down is, I do everything or um, as an example, I'm a full service agency, but what is your sweet spot? What are the solutions that you know that the company might be having that you can help solve? Um, again, that goes back to identifying where you fit into the supply chain. So understanding um, the operation and where you'd be a good fit um, is, is um, huge because you could be a company that could fit in multiple different areas. And it's great to be able to say that I can fit multiple areas, but um, is there one that probably makes the most sense that you can be able to sell and we can really see that value there? Um, articulate your competitive advantage. So um, you've done your homework, but have you worked with um, competitors? Have you worked in a similar industry? Um, how, what value has um, your service done to similar industries impacted that, that company? And so all of that is important to really highlight and hone in on. Um, and then we can ask more questions getting into uh, the nuts and bolts of your operation. But having that understanding within um, who you are, what you do, and how you do it um, is really important um, when you're having a conversation and pitching to a corporate. And then I think just initially kind of uh, Nikita mentioned it around um, avoiding asking too many initial questions. We want to make sure that if you did your homework at a high level, you understand um, what the business does. But then questions are, are of course, um, welcome. But really in that initial, we want to, um, it, it should be, you should be overly prepared to be able to kind of almost answer your, your own questions. But wanting to have that insight knowledge that it's easily accessible before you going into that pitch is only going to make you stand out um, because you've kind of done a lot of the legwork on, on our side of supplier diversity as we're going to introduce and help sell you um, to the business. And so Makita kind of walked through, um, when we talk about pitching that overall benefit um, to customers, whether that be um, a corporate or um, 
uh, customers for your service? Um, so uh, the benefits and the value that your uh, company's products, your service or solution, whatever it may be, we have to hear it. If we don't hear it, then um, you're missing a huge uh, mark because there are a lot of suppliers out there, hundreds and uh, hundreds of millions of them. Um, right. And so we're looking for the one that's going to help us with, these are only six things, but there are more, but we're trying to figure out where, um, which supplier can help us increase our top line. And so we're looking for, is it going to help us get more money? Because Delta is a public company. There are many public companies out there. And the goal is, one of the goals is to make sure that we are, um, yeah, increasing our revenue year after year. And so do you have something that's going to make our customers buy more? So that's a, that's something that we are are trying to look to figure, figure out. Are you going to help us increase our bottom line? So that's not, of course, revenue. That's are you helping us to decrease our costs? Do you have um, very efficient business processes compared to X, Y, and Z? Who are your competitors? Um, that, you know, if we kind of plugged you in, are we seeing, you know, some cost efficiencies there? Um, and we do a lot with, you know, our profit. It goes back to um, how much money we can donate to organizations um, and nonprofit. It goes to our associates. It goes to buying more planes, uh, buying uh, just things that we need. And so we're looking to understand, can you help us um, increase our bottom line and decrease some of our costs? Does your product and service help us increase market share? So whatever it is, is, is somebody looking to say, nope, we want to fly with Delta because of this and because of that. Um, again, we want to be the best and the biggest uh, airline um, around the world, right? And so we need our passengers to think, nope, I only want to fly with Delta. Um, compliance um, uh, and, and you know, this government space is oftentimes one that is extremely overlooked, but we are a highly, the airline industry is a highly regulated space from the FAA, the DOT, the National Safety Board. Um, but regardless of whatever company you're trying to pitch to, it could be an insurance company. Um, it could be, um, you know, UPS, they're, you know, under compliance as well. Um, so tell us how your product and service can help us stay in compliance. And then your, you know, our, our ears perk up because when we're in, <laughs> when we're in trouble with the government, it costs us a pretty penny. Um, and, and so we, we don't want to have, we don't want to see that. We don't want to have that, um, a competitive advantage. So again, it goes back to the question, what is going to, what is it that you can help us with that makes, um, this person choose us over American? And lastly, um, innovation and improvement. So this could be technology. Um, this could be um, something that we don't even know that we're gonna need in two or three years because we don't even see the industry moving this way. We don't see our customers moving this way. So can you help us kind of get in front of some of these changes? Um, can you help us uh, find, you know, more efficiencies? So that's on the, um, that's on the improvement part, but what is your company or your product or your solution helping us with to make our, um, our, our, what we're selling uh, better? So, like I said, these are only six things. These are the six things that really kind of uh, pop in, pop in our mind and probably one of the uh, more, off, I, I guess, more popular ones that we see, but there are more than six benefits and uh, values that suppliers really bring to the table. Awesome. And so I think one of the things we wanted to share a um, a good a, a pitch um, as you're starting to build yours um, or refining it, if you will, um, to whatever uh, meeting conference that you will be attending. And so when we talk about the pitch, really um, four kind of um, 
high level elements in terms of starting you know, starting with your introduction, presenting the problem or need, telling your solution, and then what's that benefit to customers. So as an example here, we're going to say I'm a CEO of a marketing agency. And so um, again, I, I'm Andrea Tom as a CEO of um, Thomas Marketing based in Atlanta, where we're really focused on marketing strategy and execution. Um, I know Delta is launching a first ever service to Los Angeles, to Auckland, and more paths to popular European destinations to grow its um, international um, routes and market. So with the launch, there's going to be a need to be able to expand to new and current customers. So as a full service agency, we have experience creating and executing destination marketing campaigns for Southwest Caribbean routes, as well as new Nike stores. So we partner with our clients. Um, we partner with our clients for tremendous um, customer engagement. And so we have an opportunity to partner um, either creating at home or digital strategies to, for accessibility uh, for your customers. And we'd love to be able to share more about the process and potential next steps with your teams. So in essence, it's um, I could be a full service um, agency here, but then I'm really focusing on, I've done my homework and I know that Delta is really focused on international, building back international travel since um, the pandemic. Um, and you've seen that with investments with LATAM, um, uh, more so in Korean Air, um, but also there are new routes that are launching that launch 2021, um, 20, well, 2022, and then launching in 2023. So being thoughtful about what that means for um, our customer base and how can we grow that share. Um, so really being intentional about um, a specific area that makes sense for that I know the business is focused on. And then how does my full service agency, what's that sweet spot um, there that could really make an impact and a difference with um, the organization? And then how can I, what's that benefit to their, to Delta's customers that are in line with the value that Delta brings um, to its, to its uh, customers, internal and external? And then what do those potential next steps look like? And so just an example of how you can kind of open the door for that opportunity to be specific about what you do. You've done your homework, shared a little bit about um, how you made an impact, especially in similar industries. Um, where you can kind of see proven results there. And then that kind of would help to bridge the gap for the next step into the conversation of what that might look like. So then just kind of general next steps. Um, we'd love if you um, if you, uh, interested in learning more uh, about Delta and um, being a part of um, our potential pro of our supply diversity program, we encourage you to register um, with Supplier.io, our supplier diversity database. Um, so that way when opportunities come, um, we can have a um, record of your um, profile in there and you can add attachments um, and details of when you fill out your profile of um, who you are and what you do. And so I know that we've been talking quite a bit, um, but we can go ahead before we jump into Q&A. Nope. Nope. Sorry, I was just kind of, I'm I'm answering a question, but <laughs> oh no worries. Um, so I know that there have been a couple questions um in the uh, the chat, so we'd love to be able um to answer. So I know um I was answering some as well. Um, and we have a couple. So um, one question I I love to be able to um shout out Mikita, if you wouldn't mind answering first um around. Um, certification. What certifications um, do we look for um, at Delta in terms of minority or their um, specific other certifications? Yep. So that is a great question. Um, so in general, we accept um, all certifications um, because certification in theory means that some organization has uh, identified and audited audited and certified that you are who you say you are. Um, and we do appreciate that. So regardless of it's NGLCC, WeBank, uh, or a Department of Transportation certification, you, you show us that certification and we will accept it. Now, there are specific certifications that help us with um, uh, multiple goals, right? And that those sort of certifications include the big five, like I like to call NGLCC, Disability IN, NMSDC, we make, um, and the National Veterans Business Development Council. Um, I love to see um, SB, uh, small certified small businesses. Now I know that um, you, know, you could register in SAM and you're self-classified as small, but actually seeing, actually going through the process as a small supplier 
uh, that makes me even more excited. Um, now, we do at this point still accept non-certified suppliers in our supplier diversity program, but I'm not going to say that that's going to be the case, you know, forever. That's number one. But uh, we will work with suppliers if you're not certified, but just know if you are coming into our supply chain and we see you uh, not certified, we are going to try to help you get certified. We are doing a lot around helping our current suppliers get certified now, and it's a lot of effort, but it's great. It helps us, but it helps the supplier even more. Awesome. And we see a question from Luke asking around, do we promote and offer opportunities for tier one and tier two connections? Um, we're seeing that's being more prevalent in large organizations who realize initial connection in the organization can come from partnerships um, where Delta can still leverage um, diverse talent through its tier one suppliers. Um, so um, happy to take a first step at it. So I would say, yes, we do um, a promote in, um, tier one and two connections. Um, there have been a... Uh, quite a bit of opportunity, I think, from a tier two perspective, where we see that as an opportunity to grow. So there's multiple strategies when we think about um, growing or introducing suppliers, and one of them is um, through a um, a tier two um, in a tier two approach, where we're leveraging our larger suppliers to connect them with um, smaller suppliers on a tier two basis, but to help them grow with um, their capacity to hopefully become a tier one supplier at Delta. Um, but it's also a great entry point um, to not only you're interpoint to Delta, but also as you continue to grow other opportunities, that's the, that will continue to help you did not just in Delta's ecosystem. So yes, we do encourage um, and promote um, tier one and tier two um, connections. Um, it's just more so about learning um, who you are, what you do, and how would that fit within our ecosystem? And then us being able to tell that story and, and, and broker that conversation um, between our business partners and the supplier. Good question. I also see a question of, is it uh, good or bad for suppliers to connect directly with buyers for opportunities? Is there frowned upon? Do y'all have a, to offer a non-pitch meet the buyer type of events? That's a great question. So we do, I mean, we love to see um, our uh, diverse suppliers connect directly with the buyers. There's honestly going to be some uh, instances where, you know, for example, industry, um, specific conferences, the buyers are going to be there and we're not. Um, so it happens all the time. Um, we eventually do need uh, you to connect with us because we are the supplier diversity team and um, we want to make sure that you have advocacy while, um, you know, you're trying to talk to our buyers or even with when you get in our supply chain, uh, we can help you as we are building programs and initiatives ourselves to support our suppliers. And so, you know, it's good to connect directly with the buyers, but please don't, don't forget about us because we are your uh, internal advocates as well. Uh, and do we offer non-pitch meeting the buyer type of events? So we do have, um, we're working on building some networking opportunities for our suppliers so that more to come on that. And Makita, you answered it um, beautifully. Um, Javier's question around in the food and bed, would it make sense for onboard services, events, and airport or airport customer service? Um, really great point because I think that goes back to um, what do you do in knowing the the, the operation um, in one of those areas. As Makita, as Makita mentioned um, in the chat, um, you're talking about coffee and potentially where it would be a good fit. If you're talking about onboard services, you're talking, um, where does that make sense? Um, if we've lost a, a partnership with Starbucks, would it be the best fit for um, onboard? Um, if you're talking about the Sky Clubs, we have um, a number of Sky Clubs across the U.S. And to uh, Makita's point in here in the message that we do like to make sure that our products are synonymous there. So the volume is a little bit less on um, on board than is the Sky Clubs. But when you think about what that volume could look like, do, uh, doing um, a little bit of homework of understanding how many Sky Clubs we actually have, um, that makes a difference in terms of the capacity um, to do um, the work for the Sky Clubs. For our events, um, depending on where you locate it, um, what's the easy accessibility um, to kind of ship nationwide? Um, what's the largest scale events that you've done before? That kind of makes a difference in terms of does it 
make sense for our larger employee events? Do we have regional um, employee or customer events? I'm thinking through those um, or being prepared to answer those questions and kind of think through that um, will kind of help to make the decision, but also to bring that to the table when you're um, pitching or having a conversation with us. So that will kind of help us to, to be able to go back and ask the right questions and be able to tell that story as well. Um, but I, I love, you know, kind of this conversation around tier, tier two as well. Um, Starbucks is a partner of ours, right? Um, and so maybe it could be a situation where we're introducing you to um, one of their supplier diversity managers um, over at Starbucks. We do do a lot of that, the, you know, the peer-to-peer -peer connections because um, we're meeting with other airline uh, supplier diversity managers and uh, transportation uh, supplier diversity managers, essentially quarterly. We're all talking as we go to these conferences. And so even just knowing, you know, kind of where you are, the type of opportunities you're looking at, your production, your capacity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Even if it is uh, not a great fit for Delta, maybe it's a great fit for UPS, who we have friends over there, or maybe it's a great fit for Coke. You never you, you never know. So um, again, like Andrea said, we need um, suppliers to come to the table with a little bit more uh, information so that we can figure out very quickly, yep, this is an opportunity for Delta. Nope, this is an opportunity that I need to go tell my um, my peer over at Starbucks. Absolutely. And just being mindful of time, we will share our, I'll, I'll put our email addresses in the, the chat. So i um, happy to follow up because um, I see a couple of questions about um, specific services and pointing in the right direction. Would this make sense? Um, love to be able to um, follow up with you to learn more about who you are and to see about um, where that would fit into the business and potential opportunities there. So I will share that. And then also ask, is there any um, last question before we kind of just um, final parting words with you all? If not any last questions, um, I do want to let you all know October, September, October, November is typically crucial for businesses as we are in the planning stages or the final planning stages and the budgeting stages for 2024. And so any sort of connections that you want to make, you know, in, in doing your business plan for next year make sure that you're connecting with those corporations and those supplier diversity managers and trying to connect with those buyers like now, because once we get to January, you know, the, the plan sometimes of what's being, I, I won't say the RFPs are, they're not starting in January, but the plan of what needs to be done is really solidified. And so, especially if you have that sort of product technology, solution, whatever it may be that doesn't exist. It's really special, really unique, very proprietary. You want to connect with those people right now. Absolutely. And then just a final thank you to Lauren and team for um, allowing us the opportunity in the space to engage with you all. We look forward to continued partnership um, with NGOCC and um, supplier, um, talented suppliers like yourselves to see how we can continue to um, grow in the space together. Great. Thank you, everyone. Andrea, Makita, thank you both so much. Thanks, everyone, for joining. As a reminder, this will be posted on the NGLCC YouTube page uh, for folks to review as well. Uh, but thank you to our partners at Delta, and thank you both for joining us today and sharing all this information. Hope everyone has a wonderful uh, rest of your day and rest of your week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Our pleasure.